So anyway, um, talking about components, we are just going to make a uh, trip around all these uh, uh, geospatial uh, components that form part of the OpenGeo stack. Um, starting from the database and um, um, with postures, um, Paul Ramsey, I think there's this uh, unspoken rule that if we have Paul Ramsey in the room, you make him talk. So he's going to uh, also uh, talk about web services and, and uh, really thought provoking uh, ideas about why we do the things we do and, and what they mean and how they change the landscape. So thank you, Paul. So demos, right? I'm supposed to do demos um, my spatial database. But um, that's not important. I'm here today because I'm worried about you. <laughs> The stakes are really high. You're young, you got your whole lives ahead of you. It's important that you grow up, that you have a healthy, happy life. You gotta make the right choices. This is your brain. This is your brain on GIS. Let me repeat myself just to make myself clear. This is your brain, this is your brain on GIS, okay? And don't start with me, right? I've seen too many lives ruined. I've heard the excuses too many times. Sure, I can handle one hit of GIS. Right? Yeah, you're a tough guy. Right? Well, my friends are doing GIS. Right? I bet if all your friends are jumping off a cliff, you do that too, right? I only do GIS when I drink. Right? That's how it starts, you know, just one. Just with your friends. You last for years, but then the years go by, and one day you wake up, you take a look at yourself in your mirror, and there you are. <laughs> and look, it doesn't have to be this way. There is another way. So let's look at why people do GIS. I mean, I'm a recovering GIS user myself. I understand. There's a lot of positive reasons people do GIS. Okay? Interactive data editing tools. It's useful. Attractive cartographic output. It's pretty. Spatial data analysis. You can learn new things. Complex data representations. You can show people cool things about data. But there are cons to GIS. There's only one point of consumption at your desk. The deployment and upgrade requires a license and installation at every desk. And it's really hard to share your view of the data without handing around pieces of paper. It's a big, complex lump of software. And it trains us. It trains us to think that GIS is the one tool to rule them all. Right? And that's kind of weird, right? Even on the desktop, we use different tools for, for graphic design, right? We just use InDesign. Uh, for data query, we use Access. Maybe for data analysis, we might use Excel. We use different tools for different things. So why do we only use one tool when we're working with maps? It's time to break free. We don't do GIS. We're information technology experts who understand spatial problems. Okay? We store and query spatial information. We analyze spatial information. We symbolize spatial information. We share spatial information. We do spatial IT. And here's the punchline, finally. We do spatial IT on the web. Now why should we do spatial IT on the web? Let's look at the pros and cons of GIS. Web technology, and it pains me to say this is a server guy, okay. Web technology can now do almost everything we used to do on the desktop. They can do it cheaper, they can do it more flexibly. Okay, so the pros, interactive data editing. We can do that on the web. Tim's gonna show us some demos about that. Attractive cartographic output. We can do that, right? I have demos of printing, but you can print off the web. Spatial data analysis. We can do that on the web. Complex data representations. Martin's going to show us some demonstrations of that. We can do that on the web, too. And when you're on the web, all the cons of the desktop disappear. The one point of consumption, not a problem on the web, goes away. Deployment and upgrade, just upgrade your server. No deployment problems. Hard copies, not a problem on the web. You just ship around a URL, like Mike Byrne talked about yesterday. And I'm not talking about putting GIS on the web, right? I'm not talking about just translating the one ring of desktop GIS over to web technologies like 
like this super site, right, from my home province of BC. Uh, it's got the classic row of fancy tools that only GIS people understand. Uh, the list of layers, every possible layer in the entire data warehouse. Even the active layer concept, we borrowed it from the desktop experience, because everyone knows what an active layer is, right? It's the one with the dark eye, by the way. Um, and then we got to embed directions right into the user interface, because it's so freaking complex that normal folks can't figure it out on their own. This is not the way. So there's a truth about web mapping applications we need to examine, like the truth. The truth came knocking at my door, and, it said, and I said, Go away, I'm looking for the truth. And so it did. When we're building things, when we're building new apps, so the daily quotidian affairs, um, the apparent requirements for our users, what they say they need as opposed to what they do need, can get in the way of our pursuit of the truth. Um, so my colleague, Ian Schneider, he built this app back when he was an independent consultant. It's a, it's a decision support system which is to say it doesn't have a single purpose. It's, it's built in the hope of finding a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he didn't do it to do this malevolently, right? He didn't do it because he was a consultant. He, he carefully built exactly what the client requested, feature by feature. Now, in theory, it serves everyone. In practice, it serves no one. But after he was done, right, when the pressure deliverer had abated, when he had the time to <laughs> contemplate, the truth came, right? A single decision support application cannot meet every purpose. But on the web, it's possible for each purpose to have their own decision support application. And so we built this example. We just stripped down the original application um, to just a base map and a handful of layers of real-time data that weather managers needed to make decisions about when to do cloud seeding. Um, notice you can't turn the layers on and off anymore. The toolbar on the top is gone. All it is is to just look at the data they need to see to make their decision. No instruction panel. They don't need it. So the truth, every good application has one purpose. And if you can't name that purpose, you shouldn't build the application. I go even farther down this road, and, and I like to say that the best spatial applications have only two layers, a base map, and a layer of interest. Um, and here's the best part about the spatial web. Here's the part that blows my mind. Um, the layers don't even have to come from the same place. Like a good web application that appears on your screen like a single composed piece, right? A pretty map, a useful tool, an analytical display. But each component can be served from a different location, from a different server, from a different organization entirely. So we've gotten used to thinking about, you know, GIS is the big functional blob, right? A single piece of functionality. Uh, it does everything for us. It mediates our relationship with data, databases, and files. But it's not. It's a collection of functions. Right? A GIS is a data access layer to abstract different formats and databases. It's a rendering layer that turns raw data into cartographic output. There's a querying and analysis layer to extract pieces of data or transform them. And then there's a user interface to allow us to manipulate the data, the styling, the queries, and the analyses. And here's the crazy part, right? These functions don't have to run on the same machine the user sits at, right? They don't even have to run on the same continent. On the web, each function is separable. And an application can bind multiple functions together into one interface, and each of those functions can run on different servers, and each server can be run by a different organization. So I'm a canonical, simple example, a two-layer map. A base map to provide context and a layer of interest drawn using a web map service, a remote rendering service. Google can provide the base map, and the remote renderer can provide the overlay. And all that's necessary to synchronize the result is to ensure that both layers are pulled in using the same projection and scale, and the result can be composited in the user's web browser. The user doesn't need to know or care that the map he's seeing is actually produced from two separate places, from two separate sources of data, from two separately completely different organizations, in fact. The user can just get his job done. Okay, wow, so I assume you all want one of these now, right? It's amazing, it's slices, it's dice, it's like the people know. <laughs> so the next few talks are gonna show some web services in action, and when you see them, remember that what you're seeing is just one instance of how the service can be deployed. Each service can be remixed into different instances, different interfaces, different contexts. As professionals, it's time we rethought how we approach the job of doing spatial 
and map work. We don't do GIS. That's not our job. We query data. We visualize patterns. We make maps. We share our findings. We help folks make sense of the world. We don't do GIS. That's not our job. We do spatial IT on the spatial web. This is your brain on GIS. This is your brain on the spatial web. Thank you very much. Thank you.